We're going to look at a real transactional database now using multiple tables. And of course, one of the big advantages of Postgres over something like MySQL is that it deals very well with large size databases with hard coded foreign keys. Now, for those of us that learned to code in the early 2000s, we're used to MySQL databases that struggle when we hard code the foreign key relationship. So a lot of us from the early days of web development tend to leave that out and hard code it in the logic. With a Postgres SQL database, it deals with that much better and slowdown doesn't occur for huge database sizes. So feel free to hard code your foreign key relationships. To get started, you'll need to build the database, connect it up. But this time I want you to use the SQL that I've put in the tutorial pane to build the user table, to populate it with different data, and then to build a table of rows. Because we know that a certain website with a beautiful bird logo is changing at the moment. So why don't we build our own competitor? We'll call it Rora because why not? Rawrs are significantly more powerful than the sound a bird makes. Use the SQL given to create your Rawrs table, which are gonna have a unique ID for each Raw, a foreign key, which connects it to the users table. So we know who sent each one, the message itself, and a timestamp. Then use the insert commands directly in the Postgres SQL browser to add a series of raw messages. You'll need to do this one at a time so they've got an ever so slightly different timestamp. If you paste them all in one go, they'll have the same timestamp and it'll be a bit weird. So I can now see everything inside that database table, which is quite cool. So let's go into the code now and build a multi-table query that will give us the last 10 rows in the order that they appeared. So once again, I'm gonna connect with that single line, which is wonderfully powerful. I'm gonna create my cursor and I'm gonna create my query where I'm just gonna get all of the rows, sort them by creation date and limit them to the last 10. I'm gonna fetch them and I'm going to print them out on the screen just to check it works. And we've got them. The conversations look weird in that order though. So I'm actually going to use a simple reverse command to change the order of the list. Now I'm gonna do it this way because the SQL is going to get the 10 most recent rules and then it's going to show me them in actual chronological order. The SQL command could be written to do that for us but would be much more complicated. Let's use an F string now to pull out important information. I'm gonna pull out simply the user ID of the user as well as the message and print those out. Well, that looks fine, but who knows who user two is? Who knows who user one is? They've all got app mentions. So let's see if we can display the actual username of the user. And this is where we allow nested queries. And I'm gonna do it in a slightly different way this time. I'm gonna write the SQL, including the percent %s. And I'm gonna use percent %s for this because it makes a little bit more sense. And I'm going to use execute and just casting raw, which is an integer as a string to make it a little bit easier to use in this method. And all I'm doing is for every raw, for every message I see, I'm gonna go and look up which user it was that actually sent it, get their name. Now by doing that, I can also use the fetch one command, which fetches the first result. In this case, I'm only gonna get one result, so this makes everything much, much easier to deal with. I'm gonna pull in index zero of our results, which is gonna give me the name of our user. And there you go, a much more usable format for us to work with. We're now doing a multiple table query as well as doing an inline query. I know you SQL fans are all there going, why didn't you use a join query? I know what a join query is. I'm simply showing you two skills, a multi-table query and an inline query in one REPL. I'm saving you time by teaching you two things in one go. But of course, you can use the full array of SQL queries at your disposal. Now, of course, if we're building a competitor to our favorite site for microblogging, then we are gonna need a website. Luckily for you, once again, I've started you off with a basic template. And as you can see here, Rora has a wonderful icon and a very similar brand identity to the bird-based app. Now, the way this code is working is really, really simple. Line 18 is simply replacing the string curly braces Raws with the actual raw example which comes from a template. And of course, we can then go on to replace that, usernames and messages and timestamps with the correct values. 
You could even use a loop to put many of those in. You'll see here, we've got raw HTML, which is the code for the page, which only has one thing to replace, which is raws. And our raws is the code for each individual message. So here's your challenge. Let's see if we can take that code we've built for fetching our raws and building our Twitter clone and use that loop to bring in plenty of the template, replace that template with the contents from the actual message in the database and display the most recent 10 in chronological order on this page. So if you understand transactional databases, we've pretty much covered everything you'll really need to be able to do anything with Postgres SQL inside a REPL. So our next lesson is a challenge. Where well, you're gonna build your own Discord bot, which keeps an eye on Discord servers you own and checks user messages are positive and not too negative. Bye.